Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 65 of the video series in which we program an entire video game from scratch in the C programming language. First, before we begin, let's take a look at any questions or comments that we received since the last video. Okay, commenter says, have you considered a tile-based rendering paradigm? It could massively increase performance for a game such as this. So to answer your question, yes, I have considered it. But since we're already pumping out like 4,000 frames a second, doing just what we're doing, I don't feel a big need to, to switch over to something like that just yet. So maybe if way on down the road we actually try to port this to something that is, you know, severely low powered like a Raspberry Pi or it'd have to be even more low powered than that, like a wristwatch or, you know, a digital pregnancy test or something I don't know uh, in that case if we have to go and, and try to make this game work on on hardware that is that bad or that slow uh, then yeah we might investigate something like a tile based uh, rendering paradigm as opposed to simply draw, drawing literally every pixel on every frame okay next comment says have you tried the version of Clang that you can integrate into Visual Studio you might notice some performance increase there too. Also, you don't really need WinDBG to debug programs written with standalone Clang. You can still use the Visual Studio debugger. Yeah, yes. So the whole point of me bringing in the Clang compiler and making this project compatible with the Clang compiler in the previous couple episodes, mainly, I think it was mainly just to show you some alternatives. You know, just I, I want to show off some different tools and, you know, you have op show you that you have options um, that you don't have to use Visual Studio if you don't want to. We also will probably be using uh, VS Code at some point in the future. So, yeah, I mean, there is a and, and I mentioned this. I mentioned this uh, earlier whenever I started working with with Clang is that there is a version that integrates with Visual Studio, but the whole point was to show you an alternative to Visual Studio. And the same thing with WinDBG. Uh, yes, you can absolutely use the, you can, you can use Visual Studio, you can use the debugger inside of Visual Studio to debug external executables. Um, you can also use the performance profiler on external executables as well in case you didn't know again well I, again i just wanted to show you alternatives to visual studio and that was the main reason for me showing WinDBG. it's not that you have to use it it's just i wanted to show you that there are more there there are more than one ways uh to do it there are multiple tools out there next commenter has a comment on uh last episode we talked about the volatile keyword volatile equals whenever you were doing something with this always load it out of memory don't assume don't optimize yes that's what i said right that's what i was trying to say have you done any work on the rounded windows yet i did a quick test run of it and it didn't look too good I think you need to make the borders two pixels thick or drop the angle more and come up with a new color for anti-aliasing. The double thick border would probably be the better solution, both ease of implementing and in looks. So that makes a lot of sense. And this same person, were, he, he actually submitted a pull request uh, that we're going to look at here in a minute. Next commenter says, really dumb question. Why not use time.h. Uh, well, because I think time.h is pretty much only used in like Unix and Linux operating systems. I don't think Windows even has a time.h, and if it does, I don't think I've ever seen anyone use time.h before on Windows. It's just not necessary. Next commenter says, could you use the go-to method and have different labels within your process hero input function instead of making functions for every game state? That way you can still have the key press data at the top and the switch statement would just kick you into different labels of the function and you would terminate each label with a go-to exit so that it doesn't go into the other state code. Yeah, we could do that, but 
I don't think we will do that because a lot of the process player input code logic can get pretty complicated for some of these game states. So it doesn't make sense to cram all the, the stuff together into one function when you can break it apart into several different functions. I think it makes a lot more sense to have it broken out into separate functions um, just to keep things clean. Te there's nothing technically stopping us from doing that though. I just don't necessarily see a reason to try to cram everything into one function. All right, that does it for the comments. Now, next I want to go to uh, GitHub and take a look at, take a look at a pull request that came in since the last episode. So I click on pull requests here. The, the title is added prototype procedure draw window thick for review. This is a clone. Let me go ahead and increase the font size. This is a clone of draw window that implements rounded borders and two pixel wide border. I changed one of the calls from create naming screen.c to use the draw window thick procedure. I don't know how I feel about the thicker windows. Like to get your opinion on them. If accepted, you can combine with draw window, but I think keeping the ability to create single pixel windows is also valuable. Let's click on the commits tab and let's see what what actually changed. Okay, so here you can see in the uh, draw character naming function, he changed uh, one of the calls from the old function to the new function, which is draw window thick. He also added a new flag, uh, rounded corners. And by the way, if you didn't watch the previous episode, episode 64, I actually asked for this. So, um, you know, I can't, I can't, I'm definitely not going to complain because he uh, did actually uh, give me the rounded corners that I asked for in the last episode. Okay, so um, this really annoys me because you can see that it has his editor is apparently using a different encoding. It's apparently using a different character encoding than mine because his editor turned this little dash, em dash or hyphen or whatever you want to call it, into that character, whatever that is. And that is very annoying to me. It also changed this character, which is just in the comments. Um, we've had plenty of problems with that character. It's this little uh, extended ASCII character into another one of these. But anyway, oh, and one more. It changed a uh, space uh, next to this YMM0 thing. Again, it's just a code comment. It's not even actually code. Uh, it's just a comment but it changed that into that. So apparently his text editor encodes a space uh, differently than mine, or apparently I'm using some sort of space that isn't really a space. It's maybe some sort of Unicode space. It's That's super annoying. I hate it. Uh, I'll try to fix it. Anyway, here is his new function. He just copied draw window, called it draw window thick. So the whole idea here, and, and he, he knows this and specifically said in the description that, you know, if you like this, give it a, give it a test, give it a, a test run. And if you like the behavior of this, then, then you should fold it back into your original draw window function. Um, you know, they're not, they're not saying that we should just have this extra function called draw window thick. <clears throat> Obviously, it makes mo I think it makes the most sense to just simply uh, bring this functionality into draw window and then add an extra parameter to the draw window function that's just an integer for thickness. Like, you know, one pixel thick, two pixels thick, three pixels thick. It's going to, if we do that, however, it's going to increase the complexity of our draw window logic quite a bit because we'll have to account for, you know, the thickness. Is the, 
how many how many pixels thick is the border going to be how many pixels thick is the shadow going to be and all this kind of stuff so anyway oh and it keeps going what else here it's like some white space uh, he added the rounded corners window flag to the enum and then the draw window thick okay that all makes sense so I say let's go ahead and let's go ahead and merge it and to do that I'm going to use the desktop client I think you could do this or well, actually I'm, I'm sure you could do it from Visual Studio but for some reason I like doing it from here okay choose a branch to merge into master okay is this PR6 two months ago no no uh wait let me fetch click on fetch origin leave my changes on master okay there's pr7 Switch back to master. Now PR7 shows up here for some reason. Recent branches. I don't know why I had to switch over to the PR7 branch and then switch back to master in order to pull PR7 into master. I don't get it, but it works. Okay. Sync that, um, restore my stashed change, which is simply um, was simply a change to the the Visual Studio project file itself. Uh, it was basically just removing warnings from header files that had angle brackets around them. Let me open the project and I'll show you what I'm talking about. As you can see, the pull request is successfully merged into master now. Um, but anyway, the last time I, I looked at this, I was having this problem with Visual Studio. And again, I don't understand. Um, sometimes Visual Studio does things that really annoy me. In fact, every single episode, Visual Studio does something that annoys me. But on this particular day, what Visual Studio decided to do was start throwing 400 warning uh, warning messages again uh, from all these external headers. See this? Uh, I'm in main.h right now, and then I push warning level three. I include Windows.h, Xaudio 2, all this external, all these external um, header files over which I have no control. Like I'm not going to go and like clean all the warnings up out of stdio and psapi and all these things those are um built those are like built-in windows things that that i didn't write <clears throat> it's not my code so i include them and after i get done including all those things then i pop the warning level back to uh the project default which is all warnings the last time I, I opened this project, I noticed that Visual Studio once again, for some unknown reason, started throwing up warnings um, for all of these header files. All of them. It was just like hundreds of warnings. Even though uh, there's, you know, I, the pragma was right there um, in place uh, that should have been suppressing all those warnings, but Visual Studio was ignoring it. So I'll go to pro Project Properties and over here somewhere yeah over here in external includes it has these options for treat files included with angle brackets as external which I switched to yes and external header warning level is just turned off anyway uh, let's run it and see what the draw window thick function, uh, see what that looks like. Oh, 
Okay, so we have our character naming screen. We have a double thick border up there, which I must say uh, definitely does look better. I like it. Um, so notice the uh, the subtlety here. There we go. In the upper left hand corner, this little guy, uh, this little pixel right here, basically has to not be drawn because it needs to be whatever the background color is. In contrast, over here on this side where uh, we have this pixel right here needs to be the shadow color, and then this pixel right here needs to be the background color. So uh, there, there is some subtlety there into that goes into making a really nice looking window. And you know, I agree, it looks so much nicer that I might just um, use all windows that look like that from now on, because uh, it definitely does look nicer. So what I'm going to do, and I'm probably not going to do it. I'm probably not going to do it right now because it's really simple, but I'm probably just going to uh, copy, uh, cut their code out of the draw window thick function, paste it into regular draw window. I may add an extra parameter in there for either, I'll either add an integer parameter for thickness, or I may just add an extra flag for uh, an extra window flag in my enum right down here. Um, something like window flag thick or something like that. Um, okay, but anyway, <clears throat> that is that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to move on to uh, monsters. Uh, something that we've been talking about for a long time. It's going to be, I think, one of the most complex parts of the game. I think once we finish the the loop where we enter combat, we fight with the monster, and then return, you know, victorious from combat, and now we're back on the overworld screen. I think that's going to be one of the most complex parts of the entire game. So once we finish with that, it'll be a, a huge. Um, step forward and a huge um, burden off of my shoulders. So first thing I want to do is if I go to battle, see we have battle.h and in the battle.h file we already have defined here a monster data structure. The monster has a name, it has a sprite, it has HP, MP for magic in case it can cast spells, I guess. And then it has an, an XP value that it will award you some experience when you kill it. And then I have this variable here that's just a global current monster. The idea is that um, we'll just switch out whatever the current, whatever monster you are currently fighting uh, will we'll go there. And then in battle.c we have we have a generate monster function, and we're going to use that function to basically randomly generate a monster. Um, but before we can do that, we have to define some monsters. So yeah. All right, I'm going to go back to main.c here. and declare a couple of game bitmaps. And now I have to declare them in main.h here because I'm going to be using them across multiple C files, right? So I have to use the extern keyword because we're going to load these game assets in uh, our asset loading thread, which is at the very beginning of the game in main.c. So we're pretty much stuck, I think, loading it here. So the question is, where do I want to put it? Here I guess. 
All right, extern game bitmap G monster O one and bitmap G monster O two. As a matter of fact, we may have a lot of monsters before all this is done, so um, I'm in. I'm probably going to, you know, change that to something more descriptive later on once I have thought about what I want the monsters to be. Um, like, for instance, I might do something like Monster Slime 01 and then uh, Monster Rat 02. Um, because think about, you know, we're, we're making this video game that's going to be like old school Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior, and, you know, those old school RPGs, you, you fight, you know, weak monsters at the very beginning of the game. Things like rats and slimes and, uh, you know, just really stupid stuff that you could kill easily. Uh, but then as the game gets harder, you fight progressively more difficult monsters. So I, we're going to start with the, the simplest, uh, easiest to kill monsters. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, like I said, that's the naming scheme I'm going with for right now. It may very well change in the future. So let's go here. Copy that. Go to main.c. I have to now initialize these. To Z, I have to initialize these to well anything. It just doesn't matter what you initialize them to. They just need to be initialized to something, um, which is really annoying. Um, we've talked about that a few times. It's one of the rare things about this um, language that I don't like is that I had to had to declare the global variables with the extern keyword in the H file, and then I have to go over here, and then I have to initialize them even though global variables are supposed to be initialized to zero anyway. So I don't really understand why I'm having to do this, but the compiler won't let me get away with not doing it, so I'm doing it. Okay, now let's move on to asset loading thread proc, and let's load these things. Dungeon. Okay, now we're loading monsters. We're going to do slime. Zero zero one and we are going to store that in the G monster slime zero zero one global variable. And we're going to do the same thing with rat 001 rat 001 okay next i'm going to fire up uh, paint.net and actually create those bitmaps Okay, go back to Azaprite, go to new file. We're going to make this 64 by 64. Okay, we have, we still have our NES palette loaded, it looks like. And now we need to make a slime. So I think. OK, 
Okay, and let's make him green. And now let's give him some, uh, oh, my bad. Let's go back to here. Give him some eyes and a mouth. All right, black, and uh, for some reason I feel like he needs a tongue, so I wanted to give him a tongue as well. Okay, and... Lastly, he needs some pupils. And let's see what else. I think he needs like a... I don't know. I feel like he needs like a little... A little bit of like glossiness to him. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is our slime. Uh, so now I'm going to save as, and I'm going to save this in, okay, we have maps, we have battle scenes. Let me go look at this folder structure, uh, because I haven't really looked in here in a long time. I better make a new folder. Um, make a new folder called Monsters. Let's go back in here, save as monsters, I'm going to call this slime001. Now unfortunately, it won't let me save a 32-bit BMPX here, so I think I'm going to need the help of paint.net here, game B, assets, monsters, slime 01, and notice that the alpha channel is not preserved, which is pretty annoying. Pretty annoying indeed. Okay, so we're going to delete that delete that so that we get our transparent alpha channel back. Now we're going to save as slime01.bmpx. Make sure and use the 32-bit bitmap image file format. Save. Now back to Asaprite. Let's create a new one, 64 by 64. This one we're going to make a rat. Pencil, one pixel thick. How do you even draw a rat? I don't really know. I don't actually know how to draw a rat. Uh, that's not it. Okay, I feel like that is going to be his tail. 
and it's going to be his front paw. Freehanding this with the with the uh, computer mouse is really awful. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. I think um, he needs like it's a rat, so he needs like big ears. And then he needs a face like this with a nose. And then there. Just like that. All right, now let's color him brown. Um, paint bucket brown. It's more of a red color, isn't it? Brown. There we go. Okay. Okay, let's do um, let's do pink inside the ears. Oops. Let's do. Oh yeah, rats have like black eyes. And whiskers. Oh, and a black nose, of course. I mean... Okay, rat zero zero one dot BMP. Okay, go over here, open rat zero zero one. Oh no, I lost the whiskers. So annoying. Um, We draw those whiskers back on. Where's my color palette? There it is. Okay, color. Okay, there's that, and we'll give him, actually we'll give him uh, some claws. Just like that, to make him look more ferocious. Save as BMPX. Save. Done. Done. Now we need to make sure and add those two things to our asset building script, which is copy assets dot bat. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's see music. Monsters. Let's 
Slime 001. And rat 001. And remember, we don't maintain a directory structure inside of our compressed archives, so all of these file names need to be unique regardless of whether they are in a subdirectory or not. That should do. Uh, save this. And then we shall run it. Let's look at the log file just to make sure that it was successful. Uh, no, it was not because I did not name that correctly. I miss, I did not name either, I did not type either one of these things correctly. BMPX. Run it again. Look at the log. This time it was successful. Rat and slime. Okay. Now we're ready to go back to the code. Uh, here we are. We're loading them in our code. They are now loaded. We go back to battle.h and we're going to make a monster called slime001. grat001. And I suppose. Can I initialize these? Slime. And I think it's, that needs to be a pointer. to the monster slime 01 game bitmap. And then the base HP will be, I don't know, five. Base MP will be zero, because it doesn't cast magic. And the XP will be 10. I just made those numbers up completely. Rat. And then I guess rats will be a little bit stronger. I mean, a little bit help, have more health than slimes. I don't know. Again, no magic. And uh, we'll give you a little bit more XP for a rat. Okay, let's see if that compiles. Okay, these need to be, okay, so what I don't understand is already defined in battle OBJ, so why would grat and gslime already be defined in battle.obj, or no, I'm sorry, why would main.obj be trying to define these things? They're never used in main. Main. Huh. Okay, so first what we need to do, well, first thing I want to do is I want to rename this so that it's more clear that this variable is not referring to the monster, it's referring to the sprite of the monster. 
So we're going to do monster sprite G monster sprite. Also, just thinking out loud here, I'm, I don't really like this function. I think I should probably have a list of things. Instead of making all of these calls to load asset from archive, instead of making all of these separate function calls, just one right after the other, I think it would be much more elegant and much more clever if I added all of the assets that I wanted to load into a big list, like a linked list, and then iterated over that linked list calling load asset from archive on each one. So basically, I'm thinking of creating a separate data structure that has the name of the asset, the type of the asset, and the destination of the asset uh, the variable that it's going to go into once it's loaded in its own data structure and then I can just put those in a list or an array and um, just iterate over those in, a, in a, a for loop here instead of making all these separate calls. That would be uh, much more intelligent. Um, we'll definitely do that at some point. But anyway, let's get back to the task at hand. So I've got this situation where uh, monster sprite, monster sprite, and again, if I was smart, I would have just done a thing here where I click on right click and rename. And if you rename it here, Visual Studio will go through your entire project and rename it everywhere uh, in your project. Um, just for the record, that's what I would do if I was smart. So let's see, rebuild it again. Okay, so rat and slime are already defined in battle obj for some reason. So I guess these need to be external for some odd reason. And I guess if they are if they are extern, This needs to be put into the C file, I guess. I mean, it doesn't have to, but I wanted to keep it consistent with the work that we've already done uh, in main. Now will you compile? Okay, now it compiles. go to battle.c and okay so the generate monster function 
where where is that called? I, I want to find out if I right click this and go to find all references maybe. Okay, so in battle.c, let me double click this. I'm sorry, in wait. No? That's not it. That's not it. Uh let's just let's just generate generate monster entire solution generate monster apparently I never I wrote that function but I never call it so okay very well uh, so Let's see, in battle.c, if I go to draw battle, do I want it to be in draw battle? I mean, I guess. I guess. I could just call it here, right? So in generate monster, uh, one of the things I need to do is I need to select a random monster. In the future, that is going to uh, the 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 kind of random monsters that I randomly generate is going to depend on where on the world map you are. You know, for example, the the monsters that show up inside of a dungeon are going to be different from the monsters, the kinds of monsters that show up outside. Um, and maybe on this island over here, there's a different set of monsters. On this continent over here is a different set of monsters. But for right now, I'm just going to, let's see, monster... We'll do outdoor monsters. And I'll make these pointers. So this is an array of pointers to our, oh, I misspelled that. That's interesting. Mm, okay. Uh, G slime zero zero one and G rat zero zero one. Okay. There we go. It's good. So in the generate monsters function, we're, we're going to have some logic where it's like if standing on outdoor tile, then generate outdoor, uh, then um, select from pool of outdoor monsters. If standing on dungeon tile, select from pool of dungeon monsters, etc. But for right now, I'm just going to select from one of these two monsters. So we're going to say g current monster equals. Now I need to randomly select one of these pointers. 
Okay, so since we're generating a random monster, the first thing we need is a random value. Random value. And then we're going to call our good friend rand underscore s, saving the result in random value. And then I think what we can do is we're going to assign to G current monster the value of G outdoor monsters. And then now in, intellectually, we know that this number has to be either zero or, or one, right? But as we as we create more monsters, that's going to grow. Um, so what I think we can do is uh, just do random value mod wherever my percent sign is mod um, count of g outdoor monsters. Right. Oh, right. Uh, can't do that. Let me let me think about this. Um, and G out. Let me let me see. What is G outdoor? L H. That should probably be a pointer. G current monster ought to be a pointer. Okay. Now, I think that's good. So the idea behind this um, modular arithmetic is you take whatever this random value is, you divide it by the count of however big this array is, which right now we know it's two. So It'll, and the answer, the, the, the result of this expression will be whatever the remainder is of that division. And the remainder of the division, you know, will always be equal to or less than the, the number of this number, basically. Right? So we know that that number is always going to be, the, the result of this expression is always going to be either 0 or 1. Right? So if I do get random and get some big number there, if I do get random mod two, put parentheses around that, there we go. It's always going to be either zero or one. It's never going to be anything other than zero or one. Okay, so I think we're approaching, we're about ready for this. Um, one other thing that I want to do here, actually there's a lot more that I want to do here, but one thing at a time. Uh, I want to add something to the monster data structure. I'm going to make this a to-do, a list of uh, saves that the monster can make. So like um, a rat, for example. Let's say this would be something like char um, sayings, something like this. And you know, again, I'm, this is just I'm just just kind of a mock-up situation here. Uh, squeak, squeak. And then something else that he might say is like, uh, you know, I'm 
right? So anyway, the idea is is that uh, during the battle, the monster might say random things, and these are gonna, it's going to be cute like flavor text uh, type stuff. Um, but we'll we'll do that later. We'll get to that later. Uh, so we've got this random monster generated. It has selected at random one of these two monsters that we just created. Now we need to go to draw. We need to go battle.c, go to draw battle, and then, okay, now our battle scene, we already selected that. Generate monster. We generate our background battle scene. And we also need to Split 32 bit per pixel bitmap to buffer. The game bitmap will be current monster dot sprite, or sorry, arrow sprite dot. No, that's it. That's all we need. And then it's going to be somewhere in the center of the screen, so. Uh, we'll fix that later and then brightness adjustment here. There we go. Now let's run it, see what happens. What is the unresolved external? Really? Unsigned int. Well, I mean, are you there? It's not going to clear up the error, though. What is the uh, unresolved external? Oh, there it is. G current monster. Unresolved external, you say. There it is. Extern there. And I need to there we go monster pointer current monster equals no right and of course we will in our draw battle since we're going to generate random monster. If G current monster equals null, then we crash. Okay, how about now? Are we ready to run? Okay, we're running. I do like those double thick window borders. They look pretty nice. Now let's see what happens when we encounter a monster. <laughs> okay, it worked. Um, we got a rat. The only downside is, is that the rat is not in the center of the screen in the, or where it needs to be, but that is very easy to fix. All right, let's uh, walk around a little bit more and see if we can get a slime. There's our slime. All right, there's another slime. Three slimes.
Wow. Haven't hit a monster in a while. There was one. Four slimes. Let's see if we can get another rat. Five slimes. There's a rat. Okay. Random monster generation, folks. What is the warning about? Dereferencing null pointer. G -car, yeah. I mean... Um, if G current monster, oops. Did that at least get rid of the warning? There it goes, the warning. All right. What else do we need to do? We need to fix this. We need to bring this up a little bit. Uh, all right, so let's do that. Let's be a little more uh, scientific about this. We know that the middle of the screen is going to be the middle of the screen is going to be game res width divided by two minus the width of the monster sprite divided by two. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Monster sprite dot bitmap info dot bmi header dot bi width. There we go. Now, as for the y coordinate, I think the whole um, I think I think the whole battle scene needs to be lifted up a bit. Um, we'll do middle game res width divided by two. minus battle scene dot bitmap info dot bmi header dot bi width and as for the y coordinate let's just try i don't know what that should be yet Let's just see what that looks like. My bad. Uh, this should be divided by two. I think that is just about perfect. Now, I think I probably want to move. Uh, it, it looks like it's pretty much exactly center screen right now, the whole monster encounter uh, with this giant slime. However, uh, I think I want to move it up a little bit. Um, let's see if this works. Yeah. I think I want to move it up to like right here. And the reason why is because I need room down here for a very large text box. It's going to go right here. 
right? So let me, yeah, this needs to move to like right here. So that I can have room for a big text box like right here. Anyway. I think, uh, I think that pretty much does it for today. Um, you know, I basically just need to, you know, make some more monsters. I need to hammer out the, the logic here. I'm going to probably make a couple of more uh, monsters for the dungeon area so that I have a different set of monsters that I can encounter inside the dungeon that are not the same as the ones outside. Um, Yeah, I think that's it. That is random monster generation. So that is all I have for today, folks. As usual, if you enjoyed what you saw and you want to continue watching me develop this game and keep watching as this game grows and matures into something really cool, then please hit the subscribe button. Uh, please hit the like button. Uh, hit the follow button, notify button, all that stuff. Tell your friends about what about this cool channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave your questions or comments on the video. I will address any interesting questions or comments in an upcoming episode. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. You can find me in various places on the web. Uh, one last thing. Uh, don't forget we have a companion GitHub repository to go along with this. I keep it updated in step with the episodes so you, dear viewer, can follow along at home. And that's all I had for today. So again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.